I don't give a fuck about money. I don't give a fuck about so-called fame. All I give a fuck about is the truth, morality, conscience, saving children from needless, excruciating agony! You fucking cowardly retards! Every fucking day! It means nothing to you, you imbecile! There's no need for him to shout. Every day! Every day! Every fucking day! Every second of every day! If I murdered a child in front of you right now, how would you feel? How would you react? What would you think? You stupid cunt! 20 fucking years! I've been tirelessly working like fuck to save children from needless excruciating agony and all the while these spastics are behind killing them by choice, on purpose and the companies I'm giving the money to <laughs> are sponging off it, taking it for themselves holding certain villages hostage. When you look at a fucking pack of tomatoes and hate Britain, why are they not from Britain? Why are they from Malta, Spain, out of fucking Gibraltar? Why the fuck are they not from Britain? Tomatoes from Britain, vegetables from Britain, are sent out to Africa to undercut the poor farmer so his arse collapses, right? He can't sell his own produce cheaper than British fare, which is flown out at your expense to undercut and keep these people in a state, right? They want to keep them in. It's crush a mole, not whack a mole. Whack a mole's for people like me. Whack a mole's for people who are living Christs who believe in the moral law of the universe, which, like gravity, is invisible. But once again, try throwing your arse off a roof and see how you go. And I repeat, I came to the exact same conclusion that, that Yeshua of Nazareth came to. When you meet people who are like the Trump in the Albert Hall, when you meet people who are like Wurzel, it's because, and this is uh, the, I'm extracting this from what Yeshua said. He said, um, they are rejecting their blame. Yeah? They're rejecting being to blame for the punishment of their sins. Their sins against others. And the refusal to accept the blame uh, is why they never progress. And this takes me to a really, really important point, right? Um, the dorsolateral section of your brain is an enormous gift from your ancestors. All their combined success stories, love stories, dreams of you. You must have had dreams for your future children, you know, or your existing children, and maybe their children. You may have thought, if I do this, this will build a legacy and I can pass that on to my family. Zionist Jews' legacy is uh, uh, to exterminate the species, excluding themselves. So, what is the dorsolateral section? I'll tell you. It develops up until you're 40, right? So, right? Uh, when you are 40, that's pretty much, you're fucked. So these Zionist spastics target children very, very early, uh, put them in an environment uh, where they have a kind of increasing level of ambient abuse from the cradle right through the grave. And so you ingrain a defence mechanism which over time becomes an offence mechanism which over time degenerates into a sex offender. Uh, where imbeciles like that, um, their idea of intelligence is being offensive um, and um, behind which they've pathologically ingrained a hollow uh, where a soul should be and a wafer-thin narrow mind that goes nowhere. Uh, and the, if you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't develop it, of course. And in a nutcake, right, the dorsolateral section of your brain is the last to develop. It's the greatest gift from your ancestors, right? And... Uh, you mean you've got your debt from your ancestors, your your urges that you'll have are from your ancestors, uh, your instincts, so to speak, 
However, your ability to control those urges and to think and rise above them and overcome are dependent upon your prefrontal cortex and your dorsolateral section, which you still ingrain until you're 40. But if you don't know about the moral law of the universe, if you've ingrained a stupid, rigid pathology that you can overcome and understand uh, being non-reactionary in this day and age with what you're subject to is wrong. However, me and, and Yeshua and Martin Luther King had to go through this in Gandhi uh, because when you get to that fork in the road I mentioned and you change your wheel, you, know, you get a bit more grip on this particular fucking climb, I tell you. And that's why Jesus got a fucking grip on a bull whip and then started fucking whipping fuck out of Pharisees who make up shite so they can abuse you through usury. Yeah, usury. How's it working out for you? Fucking bankers, yeah, fucking, at this moment in time, they're dropping like flies. Oh, I wonder why. And so, how's it working out for me? Well, at this moment in time, I am being inundated with gifts, the like of which would blow your mind if you received one of them. Yeah. However, um, I'm still going at a modest pace. I want to up that more and more and more. You know, to me, a gift was today. I went out onto the promised land and uh, my farm and, you know, I sat out there with bugger logs and the sun was setting and it took a real long time to set. And it, it was, it's like it goes into your atoms and separates them. And you feel like you're glowing. You could be in a ready brick advert. You know, uh, when you, you know, you kind of float back to the villa, you know, and then you're ready to rock. So, um, quite literally, uh, and I wrote a, uh, an updated um, and wrote a second part to a song that I think is going to be really uh, quite popular uh, until it's... <laughs> and so, uh, spread the word for fuck's sake, you know, tell people, offer them a service. Not that kind of service. And, you know, say to them, hey, I'll give you this free service if, if you watch this and tell me what you think about it. And if they don't hit you over the head with a hammer, give them a free service, whatever it is you're providing. And, and let them know there's a living Christ and he has the solutions. And one of the most important uh, aspects I can, I can tell you about, like I say, is your dorsolateral section of your brain. Man, if you don't develop it, that's why you don't care. They've programmed you to not care. Right? And you think it's a choice not to care. I oh, don't care. You know, no. It's a failure to develop the front of your brain, which they put you into a primary concentration camp is to crush out of you and ingrain instead an offence, uh, yeah, an offensive pathology, you know, at least a wafer thin narrow, you know, pathology. And it, it ensures that you're going to be an agent of self-destruction amongst others. And if I'm right, the facts should substantiate it. And when a female gets into her 30s, um, she's now 80% more likely to become morbidly obese, alcoholic, and take all the fucking shite medicine for her nerves, but she's groomed to believe she's going to be the next Zsa Zsa Gabor, right? But she doesn't tick any of the fucking boxes that I tick. What does she base her narcissistic delusions on? She's no talent. She's no great looker. She's not related to Beyonce, yeah? She's got nothing that you can shake a stick at, nothing other than her state-groomed narcissism or delusions of grandeur, which is always prefaced with the phrase, suffers from. And when they suffer from it, just like Yeshua noticed, like I've noticed, they want to try and punish other people, like Wurzel, like the Trump, yeah? They want to try to punish other people because they feel bad that they're a lying cunt who won't stop lying to themselves about themselves being something they're not. Yeah. I still don't think I need to say it. Shut up, bitch. The point is this, right? I've got to agree. Um, so, yes, you have said it was um, a gift. Anytime he's been punished was a gift. You know, a dark gem, really tough, heavy gem. You magnify it and it makes you realise, oh yeah, I'm still on the right road. Fuck becoming that. And that's the simple fact. The dorsal lateral section of your brain allows you to overcome. If you don't overcome, you become. And it's just bullshitting yourself. <laughs> you know, they are fucking, oh man, it's just a shite person to become. So, you look at those stats again, those facts, even the paedophile massage figures show a phenomenal increase in females killing themselves after all the lies in public. They're left alone in the dark and their denial 
is just that. And they can't deny it anymore. They do themselves in. And the number one target uh, is males. And thousands of them, thousands and thousands of them every year kill themselves every night without exception of every major bridge in horrible, grotesque ways, right? And it's because there's no love for them. They're, these females are taught to hate these men, then these females are left alone and kill themselves. And these men go and kill themselves in brutal ways, and it produces fatherless children, only one out of two, yeah? Unless they're crushed and put in a bin first. So it's working, these Zionist Jews, by stopping you from developing the dorsolateral section of your brain, uh, stop you from being able to overcome your own dishonesty. Yeah, allow you to develop your true self. Yeah, and I'll say this about every single person I've met, even the most shite motherfucker, right? Every single person without exception has something good they can offer. And if they channel through that and did good by those who deserve it, I fucking assure you, right? Um, your accomplishments will be rewarded at pace instead of slowly receiving that return and being hollowed out yet your soul becoming laden with chains the weight of which will drag you down to your own personal hell and the heavier you are the further you go you know and the further you are from the warmth of God you know the colder it will be for eternity you can delude yourself that you're the arbiter of reality you know, that you decide whether hell exists or not, I fucking assure you. Why would there be a moral law to the universe? Why? Yeah, it's like, if gravity didn't exist, we would just, fl you know, fly into the fucking air after our pants, you know, in different directions. The, the point is, why does the moral law exist? If there's no God, why would God invent a fucking moral law? Right? The, the answer's in the question there. And so, um, you have to believe in it. Right? And channel it and I assure you, I'm living proof. Because in, in, in the coming videos, I'll let you know what I exposed myself to. Not to totally test it, just because um, I had to. Uh, and that's that. So, um, where did I get to now? Why? Aye. Liars, right? Liars start to believe their own lies, right? That's the problem, right? And I did it when I was seven, right? Uh, and I was coming home. Uh, and I, I told a lie at school, right? Oh man, uh, it was this kid, he was obnoxious as fuck. And he was telling all the other kids, right? My dad's got a new motor, my dad's got a new motor, right? And all the other kids were saying, oh my dad's got an old motor. And so, but he was kind of rubbing their noses in it, right? So I was stood up for, uh, against bullies at a primary concentration campus. I despised it correctly. And the thing is this, um, I said to him, Oh, my dad's got a new motor, right? Me without a dad, right? But she kind of put him in his place. So I had good intentions at heart. And this is really important. Lie like fuck. The most honest man on the earth is telling you, lie like fuck. If you're dealing with somebody who's immoral. Lie like fuck. Yeah. Because what I would prefer you do is smash their face to the back of their fucking skull. Yeah. What do you think they would prefer? Yeah. So lying is quite a poor comparison, isn't it really? You know, you know, uh, you should be doing that. Instead you say, oh, my dad's got a Rolls Royce, fucking get it up you, right? And that silenced him. But he went on and on, right? Uh, after that, saying, your dad doesn't have a Rolls Royce, blah, 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 blah. And I said to him, wait for it. My old man has a mint green Rolls Royce, due to the extent of his questioning. Um, and um, it stopped him preying on those boys. But he then was obviously preying on me. What I should have done was literally just broke his jaw. But the point being, um, when I was going home that day and I walked up the path towards the house I stayed in, um, I actually expected to see a green Rolls Royce and it, I, that's never left me. It's never left me. Because I'm such an honest man, a part of my brain unconsciously Believe well, if Errol's saying it, it must be true. <laughs> and I was walking up that street and I went, oh fuck, aye, oh, I don't have a green Rolls Royce. And here's the punchline. Yeah? When I was 11, the second visit from my old man, what does he pull up in? A sparkling mint green Rolls Royce. 
Are you able to do that? <laughs> I think it was God, you know, like rewarding me for like, you know, like Earl's gonna have told a lie here, you know, like me to make this make this all right, squeal this man away. Ha ha ha! You know, and there's countless witnesses to that happening. Especially people in Fine Fair, the car park where it wasn't made for Rolls Royces. And so um uh the point being, um so I recognise from that one lie uh, that when you lie you start to believe it and that's the problem. A huge problem. If you haven't developed here, if you've got parts missing here, if you don't have your other half in your life, as they don't want you to have, you start believing your own bullshit and there's no length you won't go to def to defend it. I repeat though, they're bad people lie, it's not matter of fuck about them. For example, yeah, if um, Fred West or uh, Peter Sutcliffe says to you, can you hold these hammers and still be here when I get back? I, 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 Peter, no problem, I'll hold your hammers, I'll still be here when you get back. Cheers, thanks for that, see you later. Right, right. Fuck him. He is a morally insane serial killing rapist and murderer. Right, fuck off with his hammers, lie to the cunt, right. You've got good intentions at heart, it's the only thing that matters. Lie, it, it doesn't matter. Have you got bad intention? Whatever the fuck you do, don't lie. Because the... I worked out, I found, discovered, the moral law of the universe is at its most honed by way of punishment if you deceive in order to offend someone unjustly, immorally, you know. So fuck that, don't do that, right? Uh, uh, however, you know, like say a, a, an angry mob of like football fans who are just after that guy because of the colour of strip he has on. This may say he's a good guy, you know, just because he's been chased by a mob, he might, might still be a bad guy, but the point is, you know, um, if they come round the corner saying, do you see where that guy went? Lie. Say, I, up that street there, see, he went round the corner, like, on one leg, like he was in the fucking uh, black and white movies. You know, try and make it convincing. Right? Uh, and, <laughs> and so, they may well uh, go in the wrong direction then. You've misled them morally. Uh, you may find out later on this guy was a cunt, so you've made a mistake. However, you had good intentions at heart. That's what it's all about. You know, if you're a child, and Myra Hindley says, Here, will you not run away if I let you play in the front garden, kid? Yes, Myra, if you let me play in the front garden, I'll, I'll stay pro. Out you go then. See you later, you fucking cow. You know, and so that would be moral, because you've got good intentions at heart, you're foiling a female paedophile and serial killer. And you can then spread the word. Although um, uh, people not, tend not to care uh, when a female is a serial killer, uh, which allows them to grow in number. So there's now 600% um, more female serial killers uh, than there are male serial killers. Uh, and predominantly, uh, the female serial killer gets away with it because you, you can't believe it's happening. Uh, however, they are clamping down on that number now uh, in key areas. Uh, and we're just letting the rest of them go and recirculating them. And um, so, um, that's really important, you know, uh, if you could just stop lying to yourself. Yeah, and because if you don't overcome, you become. And this is what they want you to become, but it's so slow. That's the problem, you know. Not only does the universe punish you slowly, you know, these people are punishing you slowly and they're using you they can rely on you to destroy yourself, yeah? And it's all because you lie to yourself until you mint, what, a Rolls Royce? No, you mint a fucking razor blade and a bottle of vodka, yeah? And they're fucking pills to finish the job. Hold that thought. So, what am I on about, eh? Um, what I'm on about is basically uh, men and women need to get together, I mean, like yesterday, and wake up and recognise that you are being exterminated. I'm going to give you the solutions, right? Because <clears throat> I, I, I came up with the solutions a long time ago. I put them in two other videos, but I didn't get around to editing those ones yet, so I'll put it in this one, right? Um, are you ready? This is the point I'm talking about. I don't make it easy on people, nor should I. Yeah, if something is worth, uh, yeah, yeah if, if something of worth, uh, you know, the, for you to d deserve it, you know, you must have lasted this long. Most people watching this went like this, right? I don't see any tits 
or any fannies. I'm just twitching them off. Right? Or uh, the female equivalent of that would be I don't see any fucking pop stars or anybody telling me that I'm something I'm not. I'm just twitching them off. I'm just twitching them off. Basically. So um, if you've got this far, you deserve this reward and spread the word. I'm not going to give you the solution uh, to the genocide you're being subjected to. You ready? Really simple, right? Overcome! Or you become. Therefore you have succumbed. Yeah? You said that already. So, here's the solution, right? How about the solution to everything? Uh, uh, Flocky knocking the helipophilication! So here's the thing, right? How about free energy? <gasps> right, how about free energy? Who could provide you with free energy other than a living Christ? Um, uh, um, hiya. Um, so, free energy. It's really quite simple, right? You may have seen it. Hiding in plain view. Uh, psychopaths get off on you not seeing it. Right? It's called lightning. Right? You may have seen it. Gigantic bolts of electricity going from sky to earth. Right? Simple. Right? Get an £80 rocket. It's really quite simple to get one. Right? Get a two mile long, wafer thin copper rail. Right? Now, have an arm coming out of the rocket. Put the reel on it. Now, say for example, for simplicity's sake, we'll use a well, right? The well, right, has a conducting rod in it, right, that heats up when it's struck by lightning. So, you attach one end of the copper reel to the conducting rod, right, which is embedded in a well of water, and pssst, up, the rocket goes, Two miles into a thundercloud, lightning in it, right? Now, at the other end, right, you have a well, and above the well, in a kind of petal formation, a petal formation, is ducting, you know, an elbow shape, you know, uh, yeah, all the way around, right? And lining the ducting are dynamos, which spin, right? So, Right? Hits the, the cloud, right? Now, electricity always finds the quickest way to Earth, so it follows the copper reel straight to the conducting rod. The conducting rod heats up, the water turns instantly to steam, and then through all the elbow-shaped ducting, it rushes, spinning the dynamos, which all come out to one big cable. They don't have to be one cable, can be many. The point being, Let's just, for simplicity's sake, say it comes to one gigantic cable. That lightning bolt has been converted straight into a cable by uh, turning uh, water into steam and steam into motion and the uh, motion into electricity, just like pedaling a bike. Yeah. So, does it end there? No. This can be fed straight into your grid or it can be uh, put in some massive storage facilities. However, the point being, um, it's free electricity. <laughs> I would stand well back from that well. Obviously you'd have a larger reservoir and so on and so forth. But um, that is free electricity. Right? right? You, I, I'm get, I would only be speculating wildly. But you think about the gigantic lightning bolts you see. Right? right? You're getting infinitely more back than, than what you're putting in to receive it. Right? And you can see the first half of that experiment uh, that NASA do when they're studying lightning. Second half, um, obviously, um, you'd have to do yourself. There's free electricity, and don't forget, uh, there's 50% more lightning now than ever before, and 50% more lightning uh, deaths. Uh, so there's free electricity, and we, uh, an invention has got nothing to do with psychopaths and overcomes them. Right? And uh, what I would suggest strongly as the solution um, and recommend highly uh, is we build biospheres and sit them on top of rockets that are electric powered. So when this bolt comes down, this cable just launches them. And those biospheres need to be uh, built now. Uh, and there has to be extra biospheres uh, with no inhabitants 
So when you start to run out of resources, you can call upon that. Number one resource would be oxygen. So um, large, large biospheres uh, wrapped in a solar panel, uh, which would become a solar cell when you are launched uh, and out there. So within them, you would have, you know, essentially what circulates, you know, um, you know, it ultimately, if you speed up the process, you're drinking your own piss and eating your own shite. But that's what you're doing anyway, you know, and and so, um, and the solar panel uh, would give you everything you need, uh, and it can drop down at night and keep you a bit warmer, um, and you would have to configure it for cold temperatures. However, you can position it near the sun. You have the sun 24 seven, um, and uh, the point being, um, uh, so these. Uh, when this comes down, this lightning bolt, an 80 pound rocket next time, you're all off, off and away. Uh, however, by the same token, say uh, uh, you, you can't, uh, you know, um, channel that much energy yet into your technology to launch you, then obviously um, you can certainly fill up, and fill up and fill up and fill up using that method. You know, what comes down makes you go up, right? Uh, and vice versa. Um, and so um, the the point being um, uh, that um, you need to get the fuck away from here. They can't stop you. These crush them all, whack them all, motherfuckers. You know you can genuinely get the fuck away from here. You know, and I'm going to Africa, um, and you know uh, uh, if I was American, I would say, look. If we take ourselves off the plantation, if we take ourselves, you know, out of this hell pit where they're preying on you, believing they're pulling the legs off spiders, you know, they are saying, oh, your second amendment, <laughs> you know, right? If you take yourself out of here, oh, stop believing it's your territory, right? Just let it go, right? Be non-reactionary by distancing yourself. Follow me to Africa. Put... Me in Africa, put yourself in Africa, America, right? Start again. All the people who believe they're American are intermingled with all these other people who ain't given it up and they ain't gone. You know, there's a moral law being returned in America right now, right? It took its time, got there in the end. Hmm? Many people are the punishment meted out to their great grandparents. You know, uh, you are the embodiment of the sins. Of those people. And so, if you fail to improve upon your lot, you adversely affect them in hell. You know, you give them an even deeper birth and you're down there with them.